The most important organelle in your body. <laughs> What's an organelle? <laughs> well, we're going to find out. This is Just Be Well, the channel about whole life wellness. I'm Dr. Tom Salt. I'm a medical doctor and functional medicine practitioner. I'm Elizabeth, a registered nurse and also the wellness coach here at Just Be Well. So first of all, organelle, what the heck is an organelle? An organelle is a specialized bit of machinery inside cells. So an organ is a big thing that's part of your body, like your liver, or your heart or whatever. And an organelle is a little tiny thing inside your cell. So that's what an organelle is. And we have organelles like the nucleus is an organelle. Uh, the mitochondria, the Golgi body, vacuoles, there's lots of cell biology. I remember in undergrad I took, I just got off the bike riding and my hair's flat here. I don't know if I can handle that. <laughs> it could be okay. Think it'll be okay? I don't know, I look like I have a comb over. I don't, I don't, see? Um, anyway. Um, um, undergrad school. Oh yeah, in undergrad I took cell physiology and cell uh, anatomy um, and there's lots to learn about it, but we're going to talk about one, the mitochondria. So um, what do you know about the mitochondria? I know that the mitochondria are very important for energy production. That is exactly correct. <laughs> so. Um, mitochondria really make higher life possible by making um, the production of energy out of our food much more efficient. So without mitochondria, you can make about two ATP. What's ATP? <laughs> <laughs> so ATP is the fancy, the big word, adenosine triphosphate. Adenosine triphosphate is like the basic currency of energy in our body. If you want to move your muscle, it takes ATP. If you want to make a hormone, it takes ATP. If you want to make a neurotransmitter, if you want to make anything move or build something or repair something or think about something, it requires ATP. In fact, thinking requires lots of ATP. Your brain is about 10% of your body weight and it uses about 25% of the energy in your body. So ATP is important to brain function, it's important to muscle function, it's important to digestion, it's important to everything. For every mole of sugar, you make two ATP without mitochondria, but you make 32 ATP with mitochondria. So it's a huge jump in efficiency. And many people feel fatigued. Mm -hmm. And a part of that fatigue is a partial inefficiency within mitochondria. And we can actually measure this in a laboratory. We do a test um, called a NutriVal in our office. And you've heard me talk about that a hundred million times, huh? Yeah, I've had it done. And you've had it done, mm -hmm. so have I. And often we find that the Krebs cycle intermediates, and I'll put up a little chart about what the Krebs cycle is, but Krebs cycle intermediates, we can measure those and we can see that um, either things are humming along great or you're inefficient. If you're inefficient, well, guess what? You're not making energy well. What's that going to do to your thinking? So people with brain fog, what's that going to do to your mood? People with anxiety, people with depression, what's that going to do to your overall energy level? People with chronic fatigue, to your pain level, people with fibromyalgia. It's gonna cause problems in all of those areas. So how do we think about these mitochondria and what can we do about them? Well, it's not just the mitochondria. There's something else even weirder called the electron transport chain. Mm. <laughs> and what happens is the mitochondria are about making something called high energy intermediates. So mostly it's FADH and NADH. Um, those are again just little biochemical things and they enter the electron transport chain, they donate um, a, an electron and it is through the electron transport chain that you actually make these ATP. Now interestingly enough, um, things that you've heard of are used by the electron transport chain to make this happen. Things like coenzyme Q10. So. Um, Coenzyme Q10 is known as an important antioxidant, but it also is part of complex one of the electron transport chain and helps you make ATP. Lipoic acid, lipoic acid, really important. Magnesium, really important. 
So being certain that you have adequate amounts of coenzyme Q10, lipoic acid, something called PQQ, magnesium, all of the B vitamins, because the B vitamins are really important for the uh, Krebs cycle. These help resuscitate your mitochondria. And interestingly enough, the stuff called PQQ even appears to help you regenerate and make more mitochondria. The other thing that helps you make more mitochondria is exercise. Movement helps make more mitochondria. So uh, even when you don't feel like it, if you don't feel like moving around, uh, it probably means you need to move around. And you know, you have fibromyalgia, you have chronic fatigue, and you just don't feel like it, it hurts, and you don't have the energy for it. Well, I'm not suggesting going out and running a marathon, I'm suggesting getting up a little bit. If the best you can do is get from the couch to the bathroom, well, do that as many times as you can. Drink a lot of water to force yourself. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can get out for a walk, that's great. If you can do something more intense, that's even better. But taking care of your mitochondria is critical for every single activity in your body. Every, again, everything from eyesight to elimination, everything from thoughts and beliefs to hormones. It's all governed by how much ATP you have and how well your mitochondria are working. So when we are talking to people with fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue or chronic Lyme or anything like that, um, you know, what kind of programs do you um, coach them on to, you know, diets and lifestyle and things? I coach them on uh, Renew Diet is typically what we start them mm -hmm. off on. Yep. It's just a nice reset for your body. And the Renew Diet is uh, available to you uh, for free. Uh, just have to join our, um, our community. So look for that in the comments. Mm -hmm. Renew Diet, I encourage them to increase joyous activity. So anything that brings them joy from you know, like you said, a lot of times we don't have a lot of energy to do anything extra, but uh, a lot of us do cook meals, uh, walk from our car to the store, we clean our homes. We can all do these with the intention behind them as being a form of exercise. And I think the really critical issue here is joyous. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're thinking, oh my God, I hate this so much. Compare that to thank God for this opportunity. And, you know, some of you are too tired to, to do the housework. I, we have those patients, absolutely. And mm -hmm. I know that that's true. So please don't think that we're um, diminishing your symptoms or your pain. We're not trying to, but it is a path. And if all you can do is get from the bed to the couch and then from the couch to the bathroom, that's still movement. But try to think about it not as a labor of torture, but a labor of love. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with my own journey through chronic illness and not being able to clean my home, uh, starting with, you know, healthy diet, yep. taking care of myself, resting, and starting on a high quality multivitamin, maybe enough to get you to where you need to be to be able to start doing any form of activity. You every, really have to listen to your body. Yep, every step of the Krebs cycle requires B vitamins, particularly um, B6, um, magnesium uh, are really critical, but the other Bs and the other vitamins and minerals are critical as well um, for the various steps. So getting on a, a really high quality, high uh, potency multivitamin, some fish oil to manage inflammation uh, is really helpful. And then eating real food. You know, you're feeling crappy. You want to do something fast, but mm -hmm. you really need to do something healthy. You know, now is not the time to skimp on, if it takes you all day to chop a pepper, you know, a sweet pepper, well, yeah, you need to take all day to do it because you got to eat the rainbow. Eating the rainbow means you're getting a wide variety of um, phytonutrients, which are going to help resuscitate your mitochondria. And we forget that whole foods are fast foods. I mean, they're yeah. whole foods. So you can, for lunch today, I had a tomato, avocado, a couple eggs, 
and some grains. Yep. That's, and they're all whole, and they were fast, like 10 minutes, it was all done. Yeah, because so I was hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so it is possible. You just have to think that, you know, when you have the mindset of when you go shopping, so what whole foods are fast food? Right. Well, all of them are technically because they're all ready to go, but... Yeah, you know, I think that's a really important thing to think about. Um, and don't let perfection be the enemy of good enough. A bag of frozen vegetables, mm -hmm. uh, you know, stir fries up really quickly. Some um, chicken, some seasonings, some good olive oil, avocado oil. Yep, and, it'll, and it's, it's fast. Right, so mm -hmm. uh, exercise when you can and how you can. Movement, try to make it joyous movement. Try to eat real food. I like to say things that have been alive recently. And, you know, the degradation process kind of slows dramatically when you freeze something. So fresh is best, frozen is probably next best, canned is down the list mm -hmm. quite a ways. But fresh or frozen foods, um, and, you know, you just have to figure out how to get it done. It's really, really important. You're not going to get better on ding-dongs and ho-hos. Small steps. Small steps. You know, don't think you have to do it all tomorrow. You have to be there tomorrow. Do one snack at a time, one yep. meal at a time, one day yep. at a time. Yeah. Unfortunately, people with really serious chronic illness, they often have lost their social network. Mm -hmm. But if you can revitalize your social network, if you can get people to come to your house or if you can go to their house and you can, you can prepare meals together, mm -hmm. it's an opportunity to rekindle those friendships. And if uh, three, you know, three friends come over and you all make a couple of meals each, you end up with six or nine meals that you know you can just share. So you all go home with a bunch of meals mm -hmm. and it's good for everybody involved. It's not just them helping you. I've it's, done that many times before. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful way it's a to... Fun evening. Yep, a fun evening of cut fingers and uh, <laughs> grated, grated fingertips. I took the fin of my finger off a couple months ago with our uh, mandolin slicer. Just, oh, a little extra protein and a whole lot of blood. So uh, these things happen. Mitochondria, super important mm -hmm. to your health. Take care of your mitochondria. Make sure you're getting, uh, again, things that have been alive recently, so fresh or frozen, and things that somebody from the pre-industrial age would recognize as food. Get some movement, try to, try to create joy. The most important health marker is your social interactions mm -hmm. and social integration. So you know, find ways to rekindle your uh, social network because it's really critical. So this is uh, Just Be Well. We're about whole life wellness and we use functional medicine to achieve that. Bye.